Hello there, you're watching Your Trades on ET Now. This is Priyanka Pill along with me is Shriyansi. Shriyansi, Indian markets extended their rally. This is the fourth consecutive day. Not just the continued optimism because of the Fed rate cut, but the FI's continued buying also has made the entire sentiment too Absolutely, bullish. Absolutely, yeah. What a stellar <laughs> rally that we've stellar seen Stellar rally. We've taken 37 sessions to cover this 1,000 points, but this was also the fastest also. Mid-cap also was 1.5% up today. Banks were the dragger. Uh, but yes, Nifty, after extending scaling up to 26,000 mark, did not build on to the gains. It dragged down. Bank Nifty, in fact, closed at the lowest point of the day also. Mid-cap was the good move for coming in from mid-cap. Small cap was slightly up, but then uh, there were many sub-sectors and in fact sectors which were influenced by the news which were in action today, especially stocks like metal stock. They were specially in actions, aluminium counters, Nalco, Vedanta, NNBC, and even steel counters. This is on the back of the China's central bank taking policy measures to support the economy. That created, that lifted the sentiment for Indian metal stocks also. Couple of uh, upgrades, uh, upgrade like um, MK upgraded Paytm because the regulatory pressure easing out and also talking about the different kind of businesses scaling up. That lifted the stock to nearly 5%. In fact, uh, the dominant news was not just this. Many sub-sectors like broken stocks, they were up in trade today. Auto ancillary went up in trade today. Overall, a good session, but it's about a stock picking market. Not that all sectors were performing, but overall, we did scale to a new high. And this is a fourth consecutive session. And surprisingly, even Dow futures are also up. So looks like that we are in for another, another day of gains also. Well, absolutely. We're really just like shining bright. And when you take a look at the Sensex also, you know, you did see the Sensex also hitting that 85,000 mark for the first time. Took 57 sessions for that one to scale from 80,000 to 85,000 as well. Powered by the likes of Bharti Airtel, Sun Pharma and Bajaj Conserve as well. Of course, there were the metal counters that were buzzing away. But uh, the other set of counters that we did have buzzing away in trade today, well, the whole power pack now, of course, coupling of power exchanges is also something that we're keeping on our radar as well. On the back of sources telling ET now that the government is moving ahead with a market coupling of power exchanges and has also asked the grid controller of India to complete the pilot study on time as well. Now, in terms of key buzzers, of course, you did have first source as well as AstraZeneca. So when you take a look at first source, you did have quite the gains coming in for that one, six percent seven percent uptake coming in for first source solutions on the back of that acquisition of essence source for 470 crores and that's the one that is buzz that was buzzing away in trade but there was astrazeneca 14 percent gains coming in for that one on the back of receiving an approval from the government of india to import du uh, durvalum solution as well used in the treatment for cancer for sale and distribution and that is the stock that also was buzzing away in trade but let's also take uh, all of the conversation forward let's take the conversation forward and delve a little bit deeper into what really happened with the market today and the kind of action that we saw and we have shilpa rao derivatives lead analyst at prabhuda steel other joining us shilpa what do you make of the market today shilpa good evening everyone and thank you for having me on the show Talking about indices, yes, we saw that we have been speaking about in the past one week that you know the levels of twenty six thousand uh, will likely test very soon, and we are there today. And for Bank Nifty, again, new highs are you know emerging, and the trajectory on the upside is also inching north from here. I believe fifty five thousand to fifty five thousand five hundred for Bank Nifty, with support at around fifty three thousand five hundred can work very well, and for Nifty. Any declines towards 25,700, I believe, is a good buying opportunity. And we can see levels of 26,200 to 26,500 in coming sessions. Uh, Shilpa, good to have you on a day when we saw another record level. We've touched 26,000 now. Is it that you should be cautious little? You would want to trail your stop loss and uh, hold on to your long positions. Which are the trades that you would recommend to our viewers? Uh, definitely, you know, I'll be having two buys for a few sessions from here. The first one would be a buy, uh, you know, in BEL. BEL, I believe, has a very strong support zones at around 280 zones from here. I believe it can do 320 to 340 zones in coming days. Apart from that, I also have a buy um, in AU Bank. AU Bank also has given a good uh, you know, it, it has found a good setup, support around 680 zones, look for targets of 800 to 820 zones. 
Uh, the third one would be a buy in Infosys. Uh, you know, the last star we saw IT sector, the technology sector emerging, you know, as a winner. And I believe Infi is very well placed for a good run up from here. Keep a stop loss at around 1860 and look for targets of around, you know, 1945 to 1980 zones. Those are the picks coming in from Shilpa. She's she has AU Small Finance Bank as well as Bharat Electronics on her radar. Thank you so much for joining us today, Shilpa. But with that, let's also go across to Srishti, who's standing by with a roundup of the technical charts for today. Srishti, breakout and breakdown counter on your radar today? Well, certainly, that's a pair that we have got for our viewers today. First up, let's have a look at the metal pack. And from that, Tata Steel is one of the breakout candidates that we have spotted because what you will see is that Tata Steel has come off its uh, highest point from 180. The stock did correct around 140 odd levels. But in today's trading session, there was indeed a falling trend line breakout because the stock did take a breather and a halt around that 150 odd levels. But for, for today, from the word go, the stock just built it off to the gains, was one of the top gainers in Nifty 50 today after a lot of news flow that was there for the metal counters. And Tata Steel was one such standout stock on the breakout side that we have spotted. Moving on to the next counter then, and that too is a breakdown candidate because the markets are giving uh, moves on the both side. And Canfin Homes is the breakdown stock that we have spotted. Why so? Because on the charts, you will see a double top formation um, making for uh, Canfin Homes. Other than that, there has been long unwinding, which actually made the stock fall below its 20-day moving average. And not just that, onto the candlestick pattern, if you observe, this is a bearish engulfing pattern that the stock did form in today's trading session. So these are the two counters, one on the breakout, one on the breakdown side. Back to you. Safe approach, uh, to have one breakdown on breakout, especially on the, gain, the, the day when you have gains, but you're not able to built on to the gains. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, so, uh, Tata Steel from the Metal Pack and Canfin Homes from the breakdown side to come to see you. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, now, let's get you the word from the wise. Uh, we did speak to Manishi Rai Chaudhary, who's the veteran investor in Asian equities, who highlights that space, who highlights certain spaces that he thinks are the emerging themes for India. Let's listen into that special conversation. As far as durable investment themes in India are concerned, I would highlight about two or three of them. First, we think that affluent consumption is something that's likely to work over the long term. There's a significant chunk of the population that would enter that 10,000 US dollar per capita income bracket or somewhere there. And it would reflect not only in consumer durables, but also possibly in healthcare, in tourism, in pockets of urban and semi-urban real estate or so. Second, um, I think not only what the population would consume, but how they would consume, that is going to be important over the next decade or so. And this is where leveraging the India digital stack comes in. We have already seen that happening in a big way, but much of the companies which are operating in that area are still unlisted. So you will see a spate of listing of these companies operating in internet, um, e-commerce, food delivery, and so on. Um, a significant degree of private equity investors possibly you know, selling off their stake, and which would in turn create a much larger avenue of investments for the money that's sloshing around. All right, I'll tell you what, time for a quick breather on the show. But as we do that, take a look at a card check coming in for e-commerce versus quick commerce platforms then. back here watching your trades and now uh, let's understand what made investors turn nervous on stocks like IEX. Sources tell ET now that the government is moving ahead with the market coupling of power exchanges and has asked the grid controller of India to complete the pilot study on time. Prakash joins in with the exclusive details. Prakash, over to you. 
Yes, uh, we are learning from our sources that the government is moving ahead with the market coupling proposal. In fact, our sources in the power ministry are confirming that the government is committed to implementing market coupling of power exchanges. A very significant development coming in. We are given to understand that the power ministry has asked Grid Controller of India uh, to complete pilot study on time. Grid Controller of India is uh, conducting pilot study on market coupling under the direction of uh, CERC. Various uh, other technical aspects are also being examined. In fact, sources are informing that the Grid Controller of India is expected to submit its report within a month and then CERC will uh, make a final decision on, uh, on the uh, timing of the implementation. Along with that, sources are also informing that the Power Ministry is hopeful that the new mechanism will be implemented either by end of the current financial year or at the start of financial year 2026. Uh, uh, market coupling provision uh, will ensure uniform price across power exchanges and help government to increase overall volume of electricity uh, trade on power exchanges. All right, then thanks, Prakash, for joining us for the details of that story. Moving on, then First Source Solutions was the one that was in focus. The stock was buzzing away in trade gains of about 7% coming in for that one. On the back of that acquisition of UK-based Ascensors for 470 crore rupees, now this acquisition is going to be adding retail vertical to the company's existing domains. In fact, my colleague Sharad is standing by with all of the important details. Sharad, tell us a little more about this particular acquisition and is it going to be margin accretive then? Well, it's important acquisition announcement coming in for First Source Solutions as they have acquired a census for almost 470 odd crore rupees. Now, details about this deal is coming in is that Ascensus is a leading customer experience outsourcing partner when it comes to retail and e-commerce business in the markets of United Kingdom. Now, the deal itself is coming in at a cheaper value of almost 0.7 times its EV sales on a calendar year 2023 basis as per analyst. And also, this acquisition will be adding a retail vertical to the first source existing strength in the BFS, CMT, healthcare and the ENU segments. Also, it also fortifies the multilingual capability for CX services. Interestingly, if you look at the numbers for SNCOs, the revenues were flattish, coming at roughly 63 to 65 million pounds over the last two years on a calendar year basis, and the EBIT margins, the working margins, coming in at a flattish 0.4% in calendar year 2023. Apart from this, this acquisition is expected to be margin dilutive initially. But going ahead, it would be accurate. The margin profile is expected to gradually improve with the anticipated revenue and the operational synergies kicking in. Thanks very much, uh, Sharad. Uh, in fact, uh, the NK note on uh, First Source also lifted the stock uh, close with 6% of gain. Moving on, on to an uh, ETNOW exclusive, insurance regulator IRDA is unlikely to give major relief to insurers in surrender value norms. Companies had earlier approached regulator for relaxation. Anurag Shah is standing by with more details on this. Anurag, uh, what are you picking up from your sources? After so many changes in surrender value rules, uh, uh, from 1st of October, finally surrender value rules are going to be implemented. Uh, and as per our sources, insurers are unlikely to get any relief they have sought from regulator IRDA. Last month, LIC informed exchanges that uh, uh, they have given uh, suggestions to regulator. LIC wanted to have a change in formula to calculate the special surrender value because in May draft, uh, IRDA proposed uh, more surrender value and and uh, more surrender value will impact the margins of life insurance companies. If you go by the timeline of surrender value rules, then in December 2023, IRDA proposed a new surrender value, which was uh, double the existing surrender value. But uh, the March notification, uh, we have seen that there was no change in surrender value. But uh, uh, in May, again, IRDA proposed to have a component of special surrender value, and a special surrender value which IRDA proposed is. Uh, was expected to be uh, the present value, minimum present value of the paid up sum assured and the future benefit. The new uh, formula was uh, presented. Uh, so, in the previous rule, if uh, after paying the three uh, premiums, the policyholders used to get only uh, one premium back as a surrender value but in new rules uh, policyholder will get at least two premium if he is surrendering after uh, paying three premiums. So, uh, surrender value. Uh, 
रूल्स विल न्यू सरेंडर वैल्यू रूल्स विल बेनिफिट द पॉलिसी होल्डर बट इंश्योरर्स आर ऑल्सो होपिंग टू एडॉप्ट न्यू स्ट्रैटर्जी न्यू कमीशन स्ट्रक्चर टू कंप्लाय विद द न्यू रेगुलेशन All right, thanks, Anurag, for all of those important details coming in. Let's take a look at a very blitzy space today, and that is the metal spark. Now, meanwhile, Chinese Central Bank, of course, has gone ahead and announced the whole host of measures to boost the economy. And on the back of this, metal stocks were shining bright today. When you take a look at what the bank really did, the, they announced a sweep of support for the economy. There was pressure that was mounting on authorities to unleash stimulus, and on the back of that, they've. got a move to boost lending to consumers in terms of what else they've done they've also cut short term interest rates and they've also the lower mortgage rate for existing housing loans is also something that should be remaining in focus as well when you take a look at the pboc's measures as well and they're going to be cutting the bank's reserve requirement ratio in terms of what else they've done they they also have the cut coming in for the 7 day reverse repo ratio to 1.5% as well let's take a quick look at china in terms of the global commodity space then and when you take a look at base metals in terms of a percentage of uh, world consumption you do have steel making up 55 to 60% iron ore making up 50 to 55% and you do also have coal making it to that plus 50 to 55% is where the percentage of world consumption for coal was but let's also take a look at non ferrous metals and uh, th these are the ones that we should be watching out for because they're down significantly from the recent highs that we've seen them making in may 2024 so when you take a look at what really just sort of uh, led to this decline coming in you did have global growth as well as recessionary concerns and they quite weighed sharply on this particular a uh, set of metals and when you take a look at what else was on the radar in terms of industrial metals you did have growth in china that was quite the concern but at the same time you do have industrial metals that have started to recover so the big question really is if the tide is turning and when you take a look at what has really led to this recovery of course there's expectations and there's also revival in china's economic activity that is very important and that is uh, the kind of concern of global growth is also something that they see abating and that is also something that is leading to this particular view let's also quickly take a look at what brokerages then had to say and copper is in a strong position and that's the word coming in from bofa they're also talking about how copper prices are expected to continue rising and that's something that they're penciling in in fact when you take a look at their forecasts they're suggesting a climb to 10750 dollars per ton for copper by 2025 but when you take a look at what else they had to say now in terms of iron ore they're not quite bullish on iron ore because they're talking about how iron ore is facing a set of challenges especially due to the falling de demand especially coming in from china's property sector so that largely is the kind of handover that we have and also the kind of uh, 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 the kind of uh, deductions that brokerages also had to make about this but let's also take a look at which were the other stocks that were buzzing in trade and we also have gorov who's standing by with that round up Yes. First, address the stock in the power sector where we saw some positive movement. So first, we have a startup power because Motilal Oswal initiated with buy rating and a target price of 530 rupees. They say this company is going through multi-year structural shift and at the same time, management also aims to double the profit almost by FY27. The next we have is GMR power where MK initiated with buy rating and a target price of 180 rupees because they say that the company is focusing on deleveraging and at the same time, asset light model which will help the company and also the valuation. Are at a favorable level. Next, we have is Power Grid, where the company actually came up as a successful bidder to establish interstate transmission system in a project in Gujarat, and all of this resulted in a positive uptick movement in these stocks. And at the same time, at macro level, we have Power Minister who told to ET now that government will be launching national electricity plan in the next 15 days. And at the same time, they say that the peak hour power demand is like. Need to cross around 425 gigawatt by FY 2030. And all of this resulted in a positive uptick in these counters. Next, we have is AstraZeneca Pharma because company recently received an approval from government of India to import some of the drugs which will be used for cancer treatment, and these drugs will be sold and distributed in India. As a result, we saw some sharp uptick in this counter as well. Lastly, let's also watch out for PNB, which is Punjab National Bank, because this company came up with the QIP. The sources says that the QIP size was around 5,000 crore rupees. and indicative price was at 103.75 rupees which was at a slight more discount than what people were anticipating and as a result we saw some pressure in this counter so definitely watching out on all these counters on the back of the news flow as well as brokerage note that we have received today all right 
Thanks very much, uh, Gaurav, uh, for all those talks which reacted uh, on the news flow today. Well, that's a wrap on this edition of Your Trades. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more updates from the business world. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.